seem to be targeted a little bit by Orlando and Ali Krieger to open up the half, and Riley makes a quick change. And he also makes a bit of an adjustment. They bring Smith in. Sam Woodman was playing that left midfield role, but they brought Mackenzie Doniak over to the left. So Doniak switches from the right to the left, and then it pushes Taylor Smith onto the right midfield role. Free kick now for Orlando. Smith, one of five UCLA players that won the 2013 title on this North Carolina team. Catley forward. Good touch from Edmonds. Then she's taken down by Ursek, who's on a yellow card. And there's number two for Abby Ursek, the captain of North Carolina, sent off here early in the second half. She knows it. She's not even fighting that call. She got caught up behind. Definitely a takedown from behind. Definitely a yellow card when you're already on one. That equals a red. But she's not even fighting that call. Already started walking off the field. She knows it. Well, really the first real adversity suffered by North Carolina Courage this season. And in some ways, Ursic may have been lucky earlier on the goal from Camilla. There was some tugging at Camilla that Ursic was doing. Of course, it was a moot point when Camilla scored the goal, but that's twice now a player has gotten in behind Ursag and the former New Zealand captain, one of the heartbeats at the back for North Carolina, sent off. So now Orlando at home playing up a man and a big set piece opportunity for Marta. it against King and there comes Chapman flying through and it's a straight red card yeah she comes a little late into this tackle I know she's trying to go in hard but the timing of that tackle just wasn't on She does not agree with that call, clearly, as Rasso receives treatment. See, <laughs> Chapman comes in hard. Potentially deserving of the red card. I think that second look made it look like a more legitimate red than in real time, some of the cleat exposed, leading with that front foot. Yeah, it's just a dangerous tackle at that point. Now Chapman will be out next match for Boston. As their difficult three-city road trip continues at Orlando. one more time. See Chapman going in. Rasso's had quite the day. Just reckless. Uh, Jordan, two teams in very different places from a year ago and still maybe trying to find their, their identities after last season. And I think the thing that helps Kansas City is their back line is maybe even strengthened a little bit with Gibbons coming in on the left side. She's a rookie, but she has stepped in and really shown that she has the ability to make an impact. Just, here's Shea Groom. Groom against Nair. Huge challenge from Nair. A huge decision. A back pocket red card. Barnes is sent off. Excellent play from Shea Groom. The reigning league defender of the year is sent off in the fifth minute. And Groom might be injured. And this is a huge decision. Groom and Barnes going into it really difficult one-on-one. -on -one. Groom caught Barnes off guard there. Just a little toe poke to start it all off. And it was 
kind of hand in hand. They both were tugging at each other, and then in the end, Barnes getting the best of Groom and earning a red card in the first five minutes. That's the quickest red card I've seen, and Groom now getting some work on her arm. Yeah, Groom, zero goals on the season. But she has impacted the game in other ways. I think a different role for her this year with Sydney LaRue back. And a huge play in this game. Honestly, one of the last players in the league you expect to get a red card in that situation. Yeah, Lauren Barnes the, was the first player in Seattle history to get 8,000 8, minutes with the same club. That's an NWSL record in, in itself. And she now gets sent off. Within the first five minutes of the game, this changes everything for Seattle. Talk about Laura Harvey trying to figure out a way to put something on a Kansas City team who's so good defensively. Now you're only doing it with 10 men. Yeah, and for Barnes, tonight was her 60th straight regular season appearance, a Seattle record, and a heartbeat of their team. She supplanted Becky Sauerbrunn as the defender of the year after the Kansas City center back won three in a row. And we talked to Laura Harvey on the phone this week, and she said, she tells Barnes, when you play well, we play well. We talked to her a little bit, too, about Barnes and her transition into a center back position and how she's stepped up and realized that the, that the team and her, she's taking more ownership of, like, I can actually be the best center back. I could be really good at this position. And she's kind of flipped a switch, and you can see it in the way she plays there. A, a huge call by the referee, and on first sight, I, I don't disagree with it. I think it was a good call, you know, 1v1 situation. Groom has the pace, and Barnes, you make a decision. And there, you, you take the player out, and you're the last defender. And What does the rest of this game have in it? Just past the hour mark, 1-1 from Swope Soccer Park. Katie Heath with space. And too long as she tried to put it towards the corner for Poliana. Throwing one by Gibbons. You mentioned the fatigue. Likely to play a significant factor in this final 30 minutes as Labonta goes into a hard tackle. A young girl card to Labonta. That's her second of the night. She is sent off by Karen Apt. So a moment of trickery and then a moment perhaps of foolishness for Labonta as she is sent off in Kansas City down to 10 players in the final half hour. A little tricky touch from Labonta, but doesn't get the ball whatsoever. Goes in hard there to Andresinha. I've said this so many times this season. That's why an early yellow card is so dangerous because it changes the way a player has to think about going to tackles. And if they don't think about it, then it's easy to pick up the second yellow. And that's such a loss for Kansas City, not just going down a man, but losing a player like Lola Bonta, who in the lineup was supposed to be playing forward, and she's played all of this game all over the midfield. She's helped out defensively, as she always does. She's gotten forward. She's created. That's a big loss for Kansas City, and that's just why these players have to be careful and why early yellows can come back to haunt a team. I'm not sure how Kansas City is going to play the second half, but even despite the 2-0 lead, this is a free-flowing attack. Not raining anything in yet. Mills trying for this late push, and LaRue sends it away. Skrosky with a dangerous play, and boy, she and Shea Groom really got into it. Skrosky and Groom with some extracurricular activity. I think Groom is justified in being upset because yeah. Skrosky grabbed it her first. Skrosky should have a yellow. 
I mean, she blatantly grabbed the arm of Groom. Take a look. Has her by the jersey, and then some pushing and shoving. Skrosky absolutely should be issued a yellow. But I don't think they're going to issue a card. And you can see our officials meeting there just at the bottom of your screen as Groom nearly let her emotions get the better of her. We have not seen a booking issued yet. Well, further discussion from our officials to decide how exactly to play this out. Again, the replay, even in real time, I thought it was pretty clear cut. Yeah. Nevertheless, our head official today, Amber O'Connor, she's standing there discussing that with Amalkar Sikaju. Benjamin Wooten, the other sideline assistant referee. And the yellow card caution is justifiably issued. Skrowski well with no, no, um, no real argument. Not of the head. And it, you give the referees credit for coming together, discussing, trying to get a vantage point from both sides, both touch lines, and that's a good job. No, and I believe they actually give Groom a yellow as well. So two bookings. Wow. So Skrowski with a yellow, it appears. And the entire team is coming to her defense. FC Kansas City. Groom has been issued a red card. Wow. That is stunning. I don't even think Groom deserved a yellow, let alone a red, unless she sensed something at the end of the play. But nothing she did physically would indicate that she should be sent off. Are they saying she threw a punch? That has to be what they're saying. It was in retaliation. I didn't see a punch to what was a clear yellow from Skrosky. This wow. is a monumental turn of events late in the first half. FC Kansas City will play the rest of the game down one player. That's a beautiful free kick there. A beautiful, a beautiful free kick. And I'm gutted for Houston right now after defending so well. About 30 yards from goal, you saw the last glance from Haran curling it over the wall into the upper corner, past the attempt of Jane Campbell. Dejection for Houston, elation for Portland, and you saw the bear hug, and a red card from Clark to Carly Lloyd. She can't believe it. Christina Uncle sends off Lloyd after her challenge against Mallory Weber. Yeah, these last two minutes haven't been so good for Houston. Campbell hasn't made to make, had, had to make many saves in this game, but I don't think she could have done much about that free kick either. And Lloyd receiving this red card in the 91st minute. Lloyd gave her two cents to Christina Uncle. Some very curious decisions tonight. We saw the challenge from Bruna that was showing a yellow card that might have been a red card challenge. I can't quite see what the referee's given here, why he's decided with a red card. It's interesting to see the replay and see see why he's gone with such a harsh decision. Can we see that? Maybe just she came in with a, a little bit of a high foot. Unfortunate, you know, the balls at that height, you, you go to challenge for it. I don't think there's any anything malicious about it. I think maybe the ref could have gone with a yellow card rather than a red. Larry Weber, the substitute, scored her first goal of the season. A big one here against Washington, July 23rd. As Portland overcame a 1-0 deficit. Long equalized Weber, the game winner in the 80th minute, as you see Omar Morales upset. A dash interim head coach, and Brooks will take this set piece. The line of confrontation is the edge of the 18-yard penalty area. Brooks clips it in. And a red car. Oh. Rachel Daly has been sent off. And we called it. We, we said it looked like it was going to come. Rachel Daly has to be careful. She's such an important play for our team. They're going to miss her for the remainder of this game. And they're also going to miss her for the following game. Definitely not what Houston needed right now in this game. Interesting to see what the, what the card was given for. But we mentioned there was a build-up of cards. 
coming for Houston and it was inevitable at some point there was going to be a red card. You wonder, Chris Nurse, if this is stemming from what happened with Carly Lloyd about six weeks ago. She runs into Sonnet and got her hand up. Sonnet made a lot of that. Yeah, Sonnet made a lot of it, but you know, once you get caught raising your hands in today's climate, referee's always going to brandish you, but at least a yellow card in this instance. Red card and, and unfortunately it's the end of the day, least night. Christina Uncle sent off Carly Lloyd, second half stoppage time, July 8th, moments after Lindsay Haran equalized. Tonight she sends off Rachel Daly, who gets a yellow card, but that wasn't a second yellow, Chris. That was a straight red, so. Yeah, I mean, we've seen any time players raise their hands, referees are brandishing a red card immediately right now, so something that players really need to think twice before they do. There's Previtt, her first touch coming on as a forward. Now Daly. Privet. Wide for Daly, Nagasato back to defend. Nagasato fouls Daly, and the substitute goes in the book. She will go in the book. So we see Marco Vega going for his cards. Talking it over with his near side linesman. It's a red card! Unbelievable! Nagasato right off the substitute's bench, and it may have been an exposed boot. Or putting the safety of Daly in doubt, but it was a discussion on this near side with Marco Vega and his near side assistants. And Nagasato brought on to slow things down for Chicago and help see out the game. And I think one of the last things we might expect from her. And we so rarely see straight reds in, in NWSL. I think this may be only the third or fourth this season. And she just just came on. That could have been the, the quickest red after uh, Lauren Barnes getting a red four minutes in for a game for Seattle earlier this season. Well, we saw Vega. and He was about to go to his yellow. Then he put it away, which had my alarm bells ringing because I said, it's either going to be no yellow or maybe a red. He talked it over, had a close proximity with his assistant. We haven't seen much of an argument from Chicago. We'd love to see a replay of that challenge from Nagasato against Daly. And Huerta ran back to the Chicago bench to have a little chat with Rory. He's now back in the mix in the, eight, in the 18 box. 